When it comes to pet reptiles, some animals suck for some people, and none more than the green iguana for most keepers. My name's Adam, this is Doug, and today we're gonna tell you why green iguanas probably aren't for you. So why do I have a green iguana if I'm telling you not to get green iguanas? Well, Doug was bestowed upon me. And if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that I've never wanted one. I would never choose to get one. This is an animal I'll never get, blah, blah, blah. Well, here we go. I have Doug now. And the reason is, you guys know I have a zookeeper. I have help. It's a different situation than most people, most likely. So I have somebody who works at a reptile store. The reptile store had Doug for as long as I can remember, and he was always in really good health. Doug was rehomed to somebody else. And then I went in one day and Doug was back, looking very emaciated. His tail is basically limp and uh, he just doesn't look good. Most of his spikes are gone. And in general, he's just not in the best of health. So he needed a good home. And the one who loved him the most, the zookeeper I hired who works at the reptile store, offered to take him in and be my expense but she'll take care of him a couple times a week. And you know what? I'm glad it happened because I actually really love Doug. But for most people, I would say green iguanas are the most terrible choice of any reptile you can get. And if you know why, you know why. First of all, this is a big animal. This is bigger than my Fiji banded iguana, which is probably my favorite animal. Sorry, Diamond. I didn't mean to offend you, Diamond. Now, keep in mind, this is a male green iguana. And although he is, I don't actually don't know how old he is, three or four years old, something like that. He is not full grown, or at least they can get much larger than this. This animal, I would say three and a half feet from nose to tail, but they can easily get over five feet and be over 15 pounds. He's probably five pounds. So he's a smaller one, but keep in mind when he was younger, he was stunted because the people that were taking care of him really didn't do that good of a job. So I can hold him and he's usually pretty chill, but we're going to get to temperament in a second. And that's one of the main reasons I recommend not to have a green iguana. Not to mention if you want something that's just going to be super chill, although they do exist, it's probably not going to be a green iguana. I might even film the rest of this video with a much better option because we're going to talk about that. What's a better option for you? And I think that you've been talked into this. If you're say a nineties kid like me, and he went into a pet store in the 90s, even one that sold just gerbils and dogs and cats and mice and stuff like that, hamsters. You probably saw green iguanas somewhere in the store too, because they used to be really popular and now they're not. And I think we're doing a great job as a community explaining why and telling people different things to get. So we'll touch on that also. Now, the good news is if you have one already, don't panic. They take up to five years to grow and sometimes the sexual maturity, three to five years depends. But I mean, it could be earlier, it could be 18 months, but in terms of growing, it it could take three years, four or five years, maybe longer if they were stunted and they, you didn't give them the best care, which is definitely possible because most people don't. It's a very unique species. And although it's really common, most people don't really understand what they're getting themselves into. Now, I'm not going to put them on my shoulder like I do with diamond because these claws are no joke. These claws will rip you apart. They're ripping apart my hands. And when I put them on my shoulder, he basically rips apart my neck and my shoulder. So that's the reason I'm not doing that. He's got that big dewlap so that you know he's a boy. And when he really shows it, that means that he's, hey, back off. He's, it's a threat display. It's a display to show, hey, I'm big, I'm powerful, back off. And uh, the females don't really do that, but the males, they definitely, definitely do. So obviously when they're big, they need a big cage. And that's the problem. Most people are sent home with a 20 gallon, 40 gallon enclosure, whatever. This is not gonna cut it for a green iguana for more than a few months or maybe a year, because first of all, there are boreal animals. So obviously you're not gonna have an animal that is arboreal in a terrestrial or lengthwise tank. So these animals need room to climb and they need a big area to climb and they're five feet long. So they need something bigger than most places will sell. Now, something like custom reptile habitats, for example, they're not sponsoring me or this episode, but they make a great enclosure that is say six foot wide or maybe one that's eight foot wide, six foot tall, something like that. That would do great for a guy like Doug. If you're able to keep them outside, highly recommend it because these animals do really well in natural UVB. And in fact, I will be putting Doug outside in the summer. Filming this, it's March 20th or something. So about a month and a half or two months, I can build something and then keep him outside until early or mid-September. Now, speaking of stuff that sucks, I mean, bad habits. Everybody knows it, but you don't have to quit all of your habits. You just have to take bad out of the habits. And thanks to today's sponsor, Fume, you can do just that. Fume is an innovative award-winning air device. Instead of electronics, Fume uses natural flavors. It's completely natural. And instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And that means no harmful chemicals. When I said all natural, I mean all natural. Something I love about, well, first of all, it's just, it's beautiful to look at on my desk and it has an ergonomic design, so it feels good in your hand and 
just listen to it. It's kind of like a fidget spinner that you can pull flavored air through. And when I said it looks good on my desk, I mean it looks good on the base, which was launched in January. It's a weighted stand to rest your fume on when it's not in use. And with a magnet inside, it keeps your fume attached. And again, more fidgeting. You can spin it around on the base. I absolutely love it. It looks great on my desk. Really, really simple. Pick your favorite flavored core. You stick it inside. You snap it together. It's actually kind of, I like the way that sounds. No vapor, no cloud, no nothing. Flavored air. And the flavors are amazing, by the way. I love the crisp mint. It's one of my favorites. But all of them have this satisfying feeling. Whoever put these together knew what they were doing. And Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. So you can be the next one. Why not? So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash Wiccans, or you can scan the QR code and use code Wiccans to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code Wiccans to save an additional 10% off your order today. Thanks Fume for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's get back to Doug. Now let's get to the temperament part because that's the part that is, well, I think overblown sometimes, but also sometimes not. Now he is a pretty chill dude most of the time, especially with females. Now, I don't know if this is a thing, if they can recognize a male from a female, but in my experience, which is very limited, having this animal, I've only had him for six months or something. Every dude that comes over and tries to hold him, he does a little threat display and then he's chill. But every female, he's just chill right off the bat. So I don't know if they can read humans like dogs can. For example, I've got a dog that doesn't really like dudes that much. Same sort of thing. But either way, people he's cool with, but some of them aren't. And you have to train them to be because some of these guys will go through what's called a iguana puberty. And then when that happens, which is, I don't know, depends 18 months to five years, up to seven years sometimes, they just decide that they don't wanna to be touched. They don't wanna be handled. They can feel threatened or have kind of like these feelings of get the heck away from me or I'll bite the crap out of you or tail whip you. Now, Doug here, he doesn't really have much of a tail to whip you with. It's kind of nubbed. And also it uh, just doesn't really work all that good. And a knock on wood, he's not really tried to nip too much unless he thinks it's food. And he's actually a really chill guy. I mean, he was a shop animal. He was at the reptile shop and he was around people all the time and tortoises and kids and dogs, which I don't recommend, but I mean, he was up on his perch. It's not like they were dog fighting. Michael Vick did not work at that store. But the point is, I mean, they can have temperamental issues and you do not want to be on the receiving end of a whipped tail or a bite from one of these animals because it would definitely hurt you 100%. I mean, if you want something that's smaller, if you live in Canada, this is the, the caveat here. Fiji banded iguanas are better. They just are. They're a better animal. I'll get one a hundred times out of a hundred if I have to choose between a green iguana and a Fiji banded. But they're not available in the US, which is where most of my audience is. So if you can't get one of those, you guys can actually have rhino iguanas and rock iguanas, which in my opinion are some of the coolest animals on the planet that we can have here. They're terrestrial, they're the same size, but a little bit easier. And then we're gonna get to the diet portion too because that can eat you out of house and home. See that threat display? He's kind of getting sick of me a bit. All right, maybe we'll put you, oh yeah, okay, all right, we'll put you back. Well, this is much more manageable. You have a little bit of stuck shed on here. This is uh, Frankie. Frankie is a Fiji banded iguana and I much prefer handling this animal. Anyway, they actually have the same diet, so we can pick up where we left off. Also notice how he doesn't have the spikes, the same sort of spikes, it's kind of like a saw blade. You're so handsome, Frankie. Anyway, green iguanas, stay on track here, Adam. Green iguanas are going to have a diet that is herbivorous. I think that's a real word actually. The problem is if you don't live in a place where you can grow your own food, it can get kind of expensive. Now I'm not saying that other things like rats and mice for snakes or feeder insects can't get expensive, they definitely can, but it definitely gets expensive to go to the grocery store, especially if you live in a place like Canada where I live where inflation, I know it's bad in the US and other places too, but here the produce aisle, what was it? A heart of lettuce was 7.75, yes, one heart of lettuce. 775. Now I don't feed them lettuce, of course. I'm gonna feed them things like mustard greens. My favorites are collard greens, Swiss chard, dandelion greens. That's what I normally buy. And actually uh, tonight we're planting peppers and things like that inside so that they can go in the garden in about six weeks or eight weeks or whenever it is. But that's the problem is that they can be a little bit of an expense because they are herbivores, but they eat a lot. Now an animal like this, this animal is, I don't know, 20% of the size, maybe less, 10% of the size, something like that, is gonna eat a lot less than a green iguana. If you have a five foot male green iguana, it is going to eat like a freaking horse. It's going to eat daily or every other day. Now, 
I mean, Matt, the editor of this channel, has a bigger green iguana than me. I'm sure he can testify these are not cheap animals to feed. Now, in order to get around this, you can go to a produce company that sometimes, or a farmer's market, that sometimes at the end of the day or end of every couple days will give things away, or not give them away, but at least kind of wholesale whatever's left that's going to expire. That you can do, or you can just grow your own food, which is what I do in the summer. But unfortunately, I live in Canada, and it's a very, very short growing season. Don't bite my ear. See that diamond was bad? This dude is much worse. Anyway, they're expensive to feed and they eat a lot. Now, the last thing I would say is, okay, if you guys didn't get it already, these this Animal Suck series is, is kind of like a testament to why they're amazing. Because let me tell you, green iguanas are amazing. They're friendly most of the time, although they sometimes aren't. They are big, but they are not so big they're going to maul you or hurt you in a way that a big constrictor or a big monitor could, although they could definitely do a little bit of damage. They have an amazing, fun personality. They're fun to watch. They're fun to watch eat. If you have a garden and can all year round, they're basically almost free. It's just your time. So yes, they're amazing. But I mean, like, let's just continue to go on and make people mad who didn't actually watch the video and say that they suck. Anyway, care requirements. They need UVB, okay? Green iguanas are diurnal animals and they come from a place that's warm and humid and has lots and lots of sun and they will be out basking a lot of the time. Now I've seen these guys in Costa Rica. I've seen them in Florida, which is not where they're supposed to be, by the way. I've seen them in many parts of the world where they're actually supposed to be. And every single time, no matter what, they're almost always in the sun, unless it's nighttime. So they need it to be warm. They need it to be humid. They need it. To... Holy cow. You're like moving and grooving today, huh? Just chill. Let's just, let's just, let's just be friends. Let's just chill. I know you just ate. You're basking. You need your pores cleaned a bit. You took a stinky poop. It's all over your tail. And if you don't give them that, well, then that's when you get into issues. If you don't give them UVB, Metabolic bone disease of all, many things, but that's the main thing you're gonna see. If you don't give them the proper humidity, they're gonna have shedding issues. The reason Doug doesn't have many of those spikes on his back and his neck is because it was stuck shed that then had the spikes fall off. So you're gonna have issues there. Sometimes the issue can be stuck shed on the toes or around the eyes. And that's gonna create issues where maybe you lose a toe, maybe your eyes become infected. And if it's not warm enough, then they're gonna fall out of a tree. Like they do, well, okay, may, your house isn't probably gonna get into the 30s, but the point is you have to keep them at a certain temperature, a certain humidity. And this is with any animal, but it's a big animal, therefore a bigger enclosure, and therefore sometimes harder to facilitate. And it's gonna take up more resources, more time, more money, and more room in your home or your yard if you're lucky. So anyway, we're gonna put uh, Frankie back for a second. Just enjoy, can you eat just not, like, is this not the most beautiful freaking animal? So there you go, that's why iguanas suck, but kinda not really, but for most of you, they probably do. Let me know, would you ever get one and how would you do it? How would you keep it? How would you make it not suck for you? As always, please hit the like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it. I can make a care guide if you want. Let me know in the comment section along with any video ideas you have for next time. Plus discounts on merch. You guys get one-on-ones with me. All that and more for as little as a dollar a month if you want to join the Patreon. Thank you guys. So I just sent out a bunch of foreign currency and stuff. So anyway, keep an eye out if you're a current Patreon and I do videos twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. So that means I'll see you in the next one.